If you want to have a second church experience or one that receives this, volunteer to serve a meal. Volunteer to, to feed someone, to look someone in the eye and let them know that we have a service for them as well, that they are deserving of nutritious food, and that we want to make sure that their belly gets full so they can deal with the other stuff that comes after the hunger is fulfilled. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, you know, I, I say it all the time that people say that God is a church that's not really a church. Well, uh -huh. People say, you know, you, you say, you don't say Jesus enough. <laughs> um, people say all you do is talk about love. Well. But no, actually this week somebody said, you say too much Jesus. <laughs> and you didn't mention love. <laughs> and that was a lot of church. I can't win, so I just am doing me um, and hoping that I am using the way that I can bring a word to you all. Um, you know, and when I when I use the Bible, I, I'm using this kind of this idea of the autobiographical. So, like the Bible is your story, and so all the characters in it are you. All the settings are the ones you created. And so you have to give meaning to it. Like, why did I write this? Why did I create this character? Why this setting? You are the author of this. And you get to decide what the word means. A reading from the book of Jeremiah or a reading from the book of you. Now the Lord, now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. No pressure. Then I said, Ah, oh Lord, God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you to speak. Do not be afraid of them either, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen? Amen. Now, y'all, remember last week when Jesus went to the synagogue? And started teaching the 1619 Project. Well, started teaching queer studies in the synagogue. Started teaching liberation theology in the synagogue. Started teaching black theology. Started teaching about the Shoah and the Mahatma. And started teaching about the epigenetics of trauma. And how that will never overwrite the epigenetics of joy. Remember when Jesus taught in a brand new way. Not from a book. Not from a degree. Not from a position of power. Not from a Nepo baby place, but from his own authority. All right. He went in and was the author of his own story. So only he could tell it. He was the primary source of his own essay, so he always cited himself. And all those who listened, they were astonished. Now, the name Jeremiah can be interpreted to mean exalted by the Lord. And this etymology reflects Jeremiah's role as a prophet who was chosen and elevated by God to deliver God's message. Spoiler alert. Everybody's middle name is Jeremiah. Amen. Amen. Now the word of the Lord, the Lord, the inspiration, the idea, whatever you need to call it, the innovation, the spark, the answer to the puzzle, the aha, comes to you, came to Jeremiah, comes to you, yet still, right now, even in this moment, saying, Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. The job didn't come to Jeremiah. The housing didn't come to Jeremiah. The new car, the new love, the new medicine, the new Rick Owens outfit, the new recovery, the new court date, the new release date. That didn't come to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah highlights the importance of aligning our thoughts with positive and prosperous and spiritually enlightened ideas. 
Trust no one who is calling you anything but a child of God. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. If you take this in, you are already acknowledging the existence and the influence of your ancestors, whose names and individual stories may have been lost over time, but whose collective presence and legacy still impact the youth and the present that still lives in you. God says, I will honor the connection and the lineage that is not defined by specific names, but by a shared heritage and history. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I've been set you apart, because God is from Oakland, and that's how we talk. Yes. <laughs> I've been set you apart. I've been sanctified you. I've been designated you for a designated purpose. I put my highest thoughts, I put my secrets, I put my treasure, I put my knowing into you before you were even born. You have a predestination. I put a divine place and plan in you. And always meant for your existence and path to have a significant purpose. Yeah. When are you going to believe me? When are you going to start believing in yourself? I appointed you a prophet to the nation's reign. Among all the people at the liquor store, you are the wisest. Among all the people at the barber shop, you are the most talented. Among all the people who are unhoused and un and underemployed, among all the formerly incarcerated people, among all the elders on fixed incomes, among all the transgender folks, among all the folks in recovery, among all the folks in the margin and out of the margins, I appointed you prophet to the nation. You are the mayor to the tender line. You are the guide to the TL walking tour. You are the music director to the change band. You are the head usher. You are the facilitator of our recovery group because everyone has the potential to be a prophet in their own right. Because every person is named as such by a higher power and an inner power, everyone can bring forth profound insight and guidance in their daily interactions and decisions. And when you catch a hold of this, when you understand that this passage democratizes the concept of what a prophet is, suggesting that any divine inspiration is yours as well as it is mine, and we all have the ability to affect positive change. In all our walks of life, wherever and whenever we speak up or act. And here's the thing there is no expiration date on any of this. Amen. So you might as well use it now. Come into your power now. Because if you believe in heaven, it's going to be there too. And it won't be any different. So you might as well just use it now while you're here. Then Jeremiah said, Oh Lord God. Truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. Jeremiah is misinterpre misinterpreting the word that came to him. Stop, y'all. Stop misinterpreting the word that is inside of you. Amen. The word that came to you is greatness. And how did you hear insignificant? The word that came to you is beautiful. How did you hear ugly? Jeez. The word that came to you is brilliant. How did you call yourself stupid? The word that came to you is prophet. How did you hear the word ordinary in your spirit? You have the power to make the word flesh. Everything you've been through is a testimony. Everything you broke free from is a praise report. We need a new gospel from you. We need someone that speaks to hope and of hope, of love and to joy. That's you. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Okay, fine, be a boy. But you better be a boy and speak the things I say to you. I can use boys, I can use girls, I can use gender non-binary folks. I, can, I came to you and I gave you my word. I came to you specifically, and I gave you my word. Specifically, I trust you with my word implicitly. If you fail, then I fail, and I'm God, and I don't fail. <laughs> Do not be afraid of them, 
For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. If you run away from the word that is in you, if you smoke away the word that is in you, if you worry about what they will think when the word comes out of you, remember, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. All that other nonsense you were creating because you think you're not responsible enough to carry the word? Oh, but you are, Mama. You were the one sent here to declassify and to set free the good news. This is your charge to keep. No one else's. This is your charge to keep. You were the one to take down the next cross of these times. Not take down spirituality, but take religion down. Not take God down, but to remind people that God is everyone and is into everyone and is everywhere and is every now. We are the ones to take our bodies off the cross. We have to stop crucifying ourselves and come back to life. Yeah. That is your destiny. Look at me means look at yourself. Means trust me, means trust yourself. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. Chew on this, God said. Here, taste this. God said, don't talk with your mouth full, God said. Speak when you are spoken through, God said. I have put my words in your mouth, and if they don't sound like love, then they are not my words. You know that those other people's words are sour because God's words are sweet in my mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. On this Black History Month Sunday, on this Jazz Miracle Tiny Sunday, on this Round of the Sunday, addicts are the ones we have been waiting for. Sex workers are the ones we have been waiting for. LGBTQ folks are the folks we've been waiting for. Say, I am carrying the word. I am carrying the word. 